Hello everyone, and welcome to the official Bakagaijin Discord server movie night year one tier list. Year one, baby, let's go! We got it in the bag. It's done. It's over. Stop asking about it. It's not happening anymore. We're on to year two. Year two. More movies. More... More movies. More movie per movies. Yes. Yeah, and if you missed this... Well, you're a fucking fool, and you should have been in the official Baka Gaijin Show Discord server. Link in the description below. But that's yeah. We watch we watch Kino every Monday. Well, well, we're gonna determine that here. Well, most Mondays anyway. Sometimes we skip it. That's also that's also true. That's why there's 43 movies here and not 52. True. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes shit happens. Yep. And we just gotta take a week off. Yep, and I'm gonna turn off Force Dark Pages because it's fucking with some of the posters. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Ah, it's blinding off! Only there was oh. a fucking. No, I don't like this anymore. Oh god, unnatural light! Hold on. Let me <laughs> turn that back on and then go to my extensions. I thought I had yeah, more. You probably, I thought I had you more probably should have figured that out beforehand. <laughs> I thought I had more extensions. Whatever. We'll deal. What? Whatever. We're doing it live. Okay. Anyway, we are ranking the movies that we've seen, and it's just. Usually we have other people watching them with us, but it's just Kevin and me uh, because we've, we've seen the most out of every, every one of them. Yep. There's like seven here I didn't see because I was either yep. sick or I didn't have internet. Yeah, or I didn't and, because I, and because I streamed them, I have seen every single one. So anything that Zeke has not seen, I can cover for. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to rank them in four spots, because I don't think we watched anything outright horrible. Um, okay. This is Cinema. Dope-ass time. It's all right. And, uh, 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 and I, I, I think... If there's a divert, you know, if, the, if there's, you know, it, would, it would probably help if you actually stream this to me so I could actually see the list. That's also a good. That's also a good point. I'm very. I'm a. Yeah. I'm a professional. This is why I have ten billion <laughs> subscribers. Hold on. How do I stream? There we go. Uh, here you go. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can see it now. There you go. There you go. We're professionals. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh. Okay. You couldn't see it before, but take my word. Turning off four stark pages was blinding. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah the only yeah. thing that was bothering me is the sadness is poster is fucked up, but whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Now it looks sadder, so that's that's good. Uh, these are not gonna be. Uh, these are not in the order of how we watch them because the file names are all fucking random. Uh, and also, special shout out to Moon for being impossible to find a fucking JPEG of. It was just web webms everywhere. <laughs> but I managed to find one eventually. <clears throat> Finally. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna rank all the fucking all the fucking movies that we saw. Uh, let's go in order here. Knives Out. I really like Knives Out. It's a really good movie. Yeah, I, 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 I have it like I have it like, like a not. It's really it's a great fucking movie. This is immediately going to cinema. Yeah, it's just like it's such a tightly written uh, whodunit that's also kind of subversive of a traditional whodunit. Mm -hmm. At some point, it becomes like kind of combination whodunit and why did you do it? Yeah, it's kind it's, of story. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very it's a fantastic modernized whodunit. Uh, and it's beautiful. It's incredibly tightly written, incredibly tightly paced, and beautifully shot. Um, oh yeah, the, and the great, cinematography in this movie is very nice. Every performance is on fleek. So yeah. Oh yeah. Immediate, yep. imme immediate cinema. Catch me. One thing in I hold on. One okay. thing I really like about Knives Out is that it has a fairly limited setting, but yeah. it makes very good use of that setting. Oh yeah, I feel like I saw every angle of that house. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Well, I know, it's a beautiful house. Uh, let's go to Catch Me If You Can, starring Tom Hanks and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. So, the unfortunate part of this is that while this is a great movie, the impact of the movie is slightly lessened when you realize that uh, the person that this movie is about probably made up 90% of this shit. Uh, 
It's definitely it's like it's like based on a true story told by a guy who exaggerates a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, based on a real lie. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't a complete lie. It was just a. It was yeah, definitely, yeah. It was definitely a dramatization. We we shall say. Yeah, this is a dramatization of his dramatization. Interesting as that is. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a good movie. I I don't want to put it in cinema tier because I think it's a little slow at points. It it has an issue of. It does have a bit a bit of that pacing issue where it kind of like lulls in a few places and. As far as Steven Spielberg's movies go, because this is a Steven Spielberg movie, yeah. I don't think it has quite as good cinematography or uh, right. That, or that's true. Like outside of character outs- writing outs- compared to a lot of other Spielberg films. Yeah, outside of the animated intro, I can't remember anything super distinct about the cinematography or direction. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna put this in. Just, so like, it's a good time. We we did have a really good time watching that. I had a great time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not quite cinema territory, you know. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. Eight. Now on the subject of movies that are cinema territory. Oh yeah, just like um, just like Knives Out is a fantastic modernized take on a whodunit. Super Eight is a fantastic modernized take on those '80s kids adventure films, like The Goonies. Like a, like a kids adventure film, alien invasion film. Like it's so fun and so creative this is the best movie jj abrams ever did yeah bar none yeah um that's not to say i don't it's that's not to say i dislike other movies that jj abrams okay i do but that's not to say i dislike every other movie he's done i actually quite like the first star trek movie he did but Mm -hmm. this is just a good few rungs above everything else that's on his cinema uh that's on his filmography yeah um gorgeous uh, gorgeous visuals, great cinematography. Great. I love the cast in this movie. Yeah, the cast is fantastic, especially since um, they're almost, it's it's mostly child actors and they're all fantastic. Um, it's really really hard in a movie to have, like hire as many child actors as this movie has and have them all be on the same level of quality. But yeah, like like usually you have that one kid. It's just like who's here, who's, here who's, because who's, yeah who's, 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 yeah their father's the, the executive producer or something. Yeah, yeah. Which producer are you related to? No, this is the, yeah. Fucking not a problem, dude. The, yeah, the, the best, the best movie for that. The, sorry, the worst movie for that is the fucking Phantom Menace, where like all the all the kids that are uh... not that are not Lloyd are clearly the daughters and sons of like producers, <laughs> the producers and production designers and shit like that. It's like, hey, I need a kid for this scene. You got a kid? Hey, I got a kid. <laughs> Perfect. Put him in front of a camera. Yeah. yeah. No. Super Eight. Fantastic location. Cinematography. Good character writing, um, it's, it's fantastic. Such a, such a great throwback movie too. God, yeah, this is this we, is we don't we, we, yeah. we don't get enough like genre throwbacks like this anymore, and I love this one for it. Yeah, all right, the Brave Little Toaster. It's all right. So I I grew up with this. You had never seen it before. I did not grow up with this movie. This is true. So yeah. I feel like. Dependent on whether or not you actually grew up with this movie and have significant nostalgia for it, yeah. the better it will be for you. I didn't grow up with this movie, and while I did enjoy it, while I did like it, yeah, it's got some. I have it's a got, lot it's of got problems some, with it. It's got some lulls. It's not very well paced. Um, the pacing of this movie is really bad. I actually. think it, it has a it has a really strong opening and a fairly strong ending. Everything in between is just. It, it, uh, hills and valleys and of the four songs in this movie only one of them is really memorable worthless um which to be fair not great song not true tutti frutti is also in this movie <laughs> <laughs> and it's the original okay. one it, it's the original one by um the the black guy not the white guy's yeah, like cheating. more popular version yeah it's cheating though it's cheating yeah um yeah, yeah. I don't know. It has way too many issues for it for me to give it better than it than a, than it's all right. I, I, I will I will agree. I think it isn't as strong as I remember it being. Um, it is it is it is classic, and if you like, if you are a connoisseur of what people other than Disney were doing at this time, even though it's technically a Disney film now, but at the time, you know, it's you know, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, it's definitely worth it's definitely worth watching. It's an interesting period piece. 
Um, it is absolutely. I but, th- it's got a good vibe at the very least. Yes, I think it is. It is a a classic childhood memory for a lot of people for a reason, but it's also not amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's iconic, though. It is, it is iconic. It is iconic. It is iconic. Um, small soldiers. Uh, on the opposite spectrum here, I actually did grow up with small soldiers. <laughs> Me too. So, well, kind of. Uh, I, I think I was in middle school, but yeah. No, yeah, I watched this back when it came out. Uh, very When it was very, very new. When you were three? When I was three, four, five, yeah. Oh, okay. Around there. Okay. Um... Yeah, my, yeah. You, you need to understand. My parents were very inconsistent with what they let me watch. Like, okay, like it's stuff like. Oh no no! You're no, not no. allowed to watch. You're not allowed to watch Pokemon, Kevin. But you can watch Species. <laughs> no no. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Your parents were hilarious. Um, but also, that's not what I, I did. I didn't mean in the you weren't al- you were allowed to watch this. That wasn't what I meant. Right, I, I meant yeah, yeah. I meant more like this held your attention as a three year old. <laughs> dude, dude, it was it was literally Toy Story, but. The toys are dangerous, and they try to kill people. It was cool. <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't think it. I don't know. Yeah, no. I like I like small soldiers. Um, yeah, I I, I I like it. I think it's missing a little something to put it in the cinema tier, though. I think it's, you know, the, the problem I have with this movie. This is the biggest issue with this movie is it has very shallow characterization. That is true. Mo- most of the characters are very one-note uh, personalities and don't really have a whole lot of de- development throughout the movie. The most development you get is, hey, I like you. Hey, I like you too. Let's kiss. That's it. Yeah, although so, it, although it is a young Kirsten Dunst, though. So that, It is know, a young Kirsten Dunst. It, 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 um, it, gets, it, gets that, it gets those points. But yeah, this, yeah, this free movie... Free Spider-Man. This, free Spider-Man. This movie is hard carried by its concept, vibes... And how entertaining the the uh, the soldier toys are, which is another problem with the movie. Actually, is that the villains are actually more likable than the <laughs> than the uh, protagonists. That's, yeah, that's really weird. Cause like, uh, Sergeant Chip Hazard and the entire like soldier and like all of the soldiers are so colorful and entertaining. Yeah. Comparatively, the Gorgonites are they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they exist. They're there. I feel like they yeah. they. This film could have been so much better if they put more personality into both its human characters and the Gorgonites. Um, as it is, it kind of lives by the the f- the brisk the briskness of its pace and the funness of its premise. I will admit this movie do- it, this movie does not waste a lot of time with its pacing. It's very go and do, so I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's at the bottom end of dope ass time, but it's still a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah, it's still a very good movie. Yeah. Lego Movie, the second part. Uh, this is one that you really wanted me to watch because mm-hmm. I missed it uh, back when it came out. Don't worry, most people did. Most people did, yeah. <laughs> I'm crying uh, on the inside. And now we don't get I any bl- more fucking Lego movies and this blows. I, I blame you, Lego Ninjago Movie! Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, the second part is great. I think it's 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 almost on par with the first with the original film. Oh yeah, this is at the very least on level with the original movie in terms of its. The, the weird thing is when you look at reviews of that movie, a lot of them complained about it being "quote unquote" too similar to the original. But the thing is, I watched this movie and I'm like, "Fuck, are you people talking about?" Yeah, no. If anything, it, if anything, it actually subverts a lot of themes and ideas from the original movie mm-hmm. in very meaningful ways. Yeah, um, no, I and I, I think this movie has a message a lot of people on the internet need to hear right now, um, which is which is that um, throw, throwing away things you care about to appear less childish is ironically the most childish thing you could do. Is the most childish thing you can do, and you are just you are going to be a much sadder person for it. Yeah, uh, no, I lo- I I really like this film. It has great songs. It's really funny. It has. It's just as. Um, it's almost. It's just as thematically rich as the original was. Uh, it's oh, a. Yeah. It's a great continuation. Uh, this. This is cinema. Right it now. is really good. This is cinema. I agree. Yeah. Cloverfield. Oh yeah, fucking Cloverfield, baby. I missed this one so much when it came out. So like, 
the thing is, the thing about Cloverfield is that I was not terribly interested in this movie back when it came out, yeah. and I'm not sure why. Maybe it was just the trailers didn't grab me. Maybe it was I didn't understand the the appeal of the uh, the appeal of the concept. Yeah. Um, which is very weird because I like Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> something about it didn't really grab me, so I kind of just let this one slide. And when I told you and Saradin that I had never seen it, both of you yelled at me, <laughs> asked me what the fuck was wrong with me, and immediately and immediately said, "We're watching this next week." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mind right. you, this is before we instated the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really just a matter of what movie we feel like watching, and Cloverfield was the one we chose. Right. Um, <clears throat> No, no yeah, this I'm... is this is a this is a great um, it's a it's a take it's a ground level take on a kaiju event, um, and it, it commits to that fully in both its like acting and cinematography. It's fantastic. What makes this movie really work is that cinematography, the fact that it's very ground level and you see exactly what's happening to the main characters at any given point in time. It practically runs in real time. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the coolest elements of the movie. I believe, like, is it like isn't it a, like a whole thing where the length of the movie reflects how long a mini DV tape is? Yes. Yeah, that's that's a great touch. Um, and I I just I fucking love the combination of like kind of found footage horror found footage monster movie and kaiju. It makes this movie utterly terrifying at points. <laughs> yeah, which is shocking, because it is only PG-13, I think. This is this is a really intense movie for a PG-13. Like, good yeah. lord, some of the shit that they get away with in this movie is yeah, well, it's really like, intense. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the greatness of some of the practical effects, the well-integrated CG in places, uh, and mostly just how it's framed and shot that makes it feel so much more grounded and real than a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is this is definitely cinema. Cloverfield is one of my favorite movies that we've watched on movie night this year. Like yeah. I adore Cloverfield. Yeah, I'd watch it again if I felt like getting scared shitless again. But uh, it's really good. <laughs> and now we come. We're going back in time to the first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. Finally. That's right. Last. We're going back in time back to the time. first Thanksgiving to get turkeys off the menu. Freebirds is okay. It's 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 alright. It's alright. It's, right. it's, it's, right. it's a it's a very fun movie. It's very silly. I I like. I actually really like the humor in this movie. Mm -hmm. It is at points very tonally dissonant. Mm -hmm. Uh, it really tries hard. To get you to cry about uh, fucking, you know, funny enough, this is the, this is one of two movies we've seen on movie night that features a surprise character role played by Keith David. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to the other one, mm -hmm. but um, Freebirds is fine. It's a it's a decent kids movie. What makes this movie work as well as it is, is the sheer absurdity of its concept. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how much it, it, commi it commits to that. But the thing, the thing is, the build-up to the concept is great, and then it happens, and then you gotta watch the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Also, big knock against this movie, imagine having pizza for the first time and your first pizza is fucking Chuck E. Cheese. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's alright. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's fine. If, it, if it's, like, Thanksgiving time and you haven't seen this give it a watch but like it's one of those things where like i'm you know i can't see myself going out of my way to watch it again but it's all right yeah yeah it's all right you know fucking it, you, you yeah, got it, you it, got it, uh it. you got Patton Oswalt. is it Patton Oswalt? no it's it's owen it's it's owen wilson it's owen, owen wilson owen yeah. wilson turkey and wow. woody harrelson turkey it's you know it's yeah good. it's good Going, uh, back, going back in time to try and convince uh keith david turkey that the humans are okay mm -hmm. anyway but uh, it's it's fine. It's all right. It does have it does have um, it has it does have George Takei ship though, which is probably one of the funniest <laughs> parts of the movie. It is. It is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Dogma. I didn't see this. I didn't have internet that night. 
Yeah, uh, which is very unfortunate because I feel like Dogma is a film that you'd really dig. Um, it is a commentary. So this is a very early um, Kevin Smith movie, you know, before he fell off. Yeah. Um, and it is a comedy that is also a send up uh, satire and commentary on uh, the nature of organized religion, uh, athe um, theism in general. And how uh, the beliefs inherent in that system are sound in theory, but in practice, how they're actually presented, um, a lot of, like it tends to make for a lot of very bad people. Yeah. Um, that said, it's actually a very it's a very it's a very smart movie. Um, my only wish issue with this film is that compared to the other uh, Kevin Smith movie we watched, which we'll get to that. Um, I felt like the pacing of this movie really dragged in places. Yeah. Some people I know didn't have that issue. I personally did, because there were points where this movie just kind of meanders a bit, and it feels like certain scenes go on longer than they should. Like, yeah. it feels like they let the camera running and just the actors just started talking in character, and they just kind of let that go for a little bit too long in places. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a dope-ass time. I like this movie a lot. All right, Dogma's then. good. Dogma's good. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, the Karate Kid remake, 2010. I fucking love this movie so much. Honestly, it's I think it's better than the original. It's better than the original in a number of key ways. Um, I think this. So, I I do actually really like the original Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah I think it's a very good movie. Yeah. Um, the problem is it's very much a product of the 80s. Yeah. Um, it has a bit of that um, 80s. Uh, kind of ignorant portrayal of Asians, I guess. Um, I don't think it's mean-spirited, though. It's just kind no. of, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why I said ignorant. Yeah. Um, and another issue with that movie is it didn't really feel like it understood the uh, core of what makes martial arts martial arts, why they exist, uh, why Yeah, people... it was definitely made at, yeah. the, at the height of the trend of, of karate dojos opening up in Southern California. It's, yeah, and, it, and, it, it, it feels it feels when well, you go back to it, and it definitely feels like the the theme park version of martial arts in places. Yeah, it, yeah, it very much leans into that more. Um, and this actually understands martial arts a lot better, and mm -hmm. you can tell that they did their research with trying to understand the origin of kung fu, why kung fu exists, and how it's not just a self defense art, but it's more an art for uh, fortifying body and mind. Yeah. I really love that element of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I think the fish out of water element is also much better represented here than yeah. in the original, because in the original movie, it's just Daniel moving cross country from one state to another. Here, Dre is moving from America to China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a completely different culture, it is a completely different part of the world yeah nothing that he knows is even remote nothing that he knows is even remotely the same here yeah yeah and it really pushes that fish out of water element much harder yeah. and i think it makes his uh plight a little bit more understandable in some ways like right off the bat yeah also this is just this is this might be kind of shallow but also um the, the streets and mountains of china are a much more interesting location to look at than southern california <laughs> I will give the original Karate Kid uh, some some props for really getting that grungy uh, kind of rundown aesthetic of like alleys and uh, kind of like uh, mid sure. uh, midtown schools. Down sure, sure. Well, but I'm, but I'm, I think what I'm saying here is that the location is a lot more interesting here, and it makes it it, it lends more itself more to the interesting cinematography than the original did. It it makes the remake feel much more grand in scale yeah. and it gives the film a much bigger importance and a much bigger cultural footprint. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm, I wouldn't go out of my, I wouldn't call it a wuxia film, but it's on its way there, you know Also, maybe this is sacrilegious to say, but Mr. Han is better than Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> yeah No, yeah, this is definitely one of um, Jackie Chan's better dramatic roles Yeah. 
This is one of my personal favorite roles uh, from Jackie Chan. The scene of him just crying in his car, recounting his past with his wife mm -hmm. and what led him to where he is, is one of the strongest moments in Jackie Chan's career, yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I honestly just love the very believable and realistic friendship and kind of like found family aspect that develops between Dre and Mr. Han. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clerks! I didn't see it. Uh, Clerks is fucking great. I really love this movie. Um, this was Kevin Smith's first movie. Uh, you can kind of tell, because yeah. it takes place in exactly one location. <laughs> yeah. And has a grand total of, like, five cast members. Uh, they clearly made this for a budget. But they made the most of it. It is a funny movie. It is witty, smart. This is just a very enjoyable film. Right. Uh... I'll put this in dope ass time. Okay. I think I think it is much better paced than Dogma, but I think Dogma has the stronger themes and ideas. So okay, I was gonna ask that. What I'll, would what would you put first? I would say Clerks is slightly better simply due to its pacing. Uh but I do think Dogma has the better themes and ideas. Yeah. Um Do you think the rest of it looks good? Do we need to rearrange anything up here? Uh Put small soldiers below the below the Kevin Smith movies. Huh. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that works. Okay. That works. Agent Cody fucking Banks. I I I watched this movie on like either Nickelodeon or Disney Channel back when this came out, mm -hmm. or near where it came out. I didn't remember a damn thing about it. Yeah. So going into this movie was practically me watching it for the first time all over again. Uh huh. God, this movie is should not be as fun to watch as it is. This movie is shockingly funny. <laughs> it's this has one of my favorite roles Keith David has ever done. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 dude. Has nobody ever taught this boy how to talk to a girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. After we were done with this movie, we like me and Sarah did, were both just like we need a mod of one of the Halo games where all the Arbutus lines are just replaced with Keith David, Keith David from Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's 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 um. Yeah, like the act the actual like plot is pretty is is kind of boilerplate and simple, but like there's something about the execution of it and just the wittiness the wittiness of it all, and the overtly two thousands vibes the, the writing is surprisingly sharp in yeah. this movie yeah um and honestly i just love the absurdity of like the final act of this movie and how it kind of just feels like it, it kind of gives the vibe of a 10 year old who just got done watching his first bond movie and was like i can do that <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's it's held back a little bit by its um its fucking disney channel ass effects budget <laughs> Definitely, uh, yeah. Uh, there's def there's definitely sort of like they're trying to make they're trying to make it look a little bit more grand than it actually is in, t in places. But um, oh uh, yeah, let's go snow snowboarding. I think what I love most is the fact that they try to put off this normal. They try to portray this normal fucking Midwest lake um uh, like lakeside house as being akin to like a Bond villain lair, and it's like yeah, it's, yeah. it doesn't quite reach that it doesn't level. Doesn't quite work. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, speaking of, this movie has a shockingly gnarly villain death at the end. Oh, it's also yeah, it's also Ian McShane, which is cool. Yeah, it ha this movie has a like this movie has that mid two thousands kids movie edge, and I love it. Yeah, I'm um, gonna put this in dope ass time. Is it better? Put... Is it better than Small Soldiers? Oh, it's better than Small Soldiers, definitely. Is it better than Dogma? Not quite. Okay. It's not quite better than Dogma, no. Oh, right. <laughs> um, it's, okay, that's weird. I, we got Goldeneye right next to Cody Banks. I, oh, how the turntables! Now, this one is interesting, because this is the first one we're going to have pretty divergent opinions on. I was very bored by this movie. Yeah, the big difference here is that, like, me and Mike grew up watching Bond, so yeah. we're already very familiar with how Bond movies go, the pacing, the style, um, and we... Me and Mike love Goldeneye. This is, like, both of our favorite Bond movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I also grew up, you know, I also grew up playing the N64 game. But um, 
I don't know. Me and Mike I don't, love Goldeneye. I don't know we what think the, it's a great movie. I don't know what the fuck it is about James Bond that just bores me. I don't. I don't know what it is. I don't like the character. I don't like his world. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I. I'd say I'm not super into spy fiction in general, but I, 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 I'm, it's not that I'm against the idea. I just, I don't really like how it's done in Bond for some reason. I suppose maybe part of it is just that kind of British dry wit that the movie has. No, I love British dry wit, dry, uh, dry wit. You know, I'll, you know, I, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I like, uh, I like a good Wallace and Gromit or yeah, whatever. No, yeah, no, well, yeah, no, while well, me and, well, me and Saradin were, like, having a great time, we were like, yeah, you were bitching the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, and as I said at the top, this tier list is going to be trying to reach a median between our divergent opinions. <sighs> so, where would you place this? Because I'm curious. Probably at the top of Saw, right? Yeah, I would put this in, like, the middle of Dope Ass Time, so I'd, I'd say the top of Saw Ride is fine. Yeah, I don't know, just out of respect, I don't know if anything is going to top it in the Saw Ride category. Um, yeah. Because I understand this film has quite the legacy. Um, oh, yeah. And it, yeah. It, it, it speaks to a lot of people, but it, do, it doesn't speak to me. And at, at, at this point, I've watched several Bond films, and I just, I don't get it. It's just not, it's not for me. Yeah, that's like, what, what was the other one that you watched? Like, you watched Casino Royale, right? Uh, yeah, Casino Royale, and uh, I think some older ones. I don't remember. Uh, like yeah. Moonraker, I think I watched. Yeah, yeah. At that point, I feel like you've already experienced the, you, you've kind of already experienced all the extremes of Bond. So if none of that really jives with you, I think that's just yeah. not your kind the of mo job, yeah. The most the most I got out of Moonraker was wow. The human race was fucking stupid for like ten years and really like pointy boobs. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was wrong with us collectively? Also, also, Moonraker has one of my favorite double entendres in Bond history. It's like they see Bond, like on the space station, having sex with the having sex with the Bond girl through like a fucking uh, like like through one of those like heat sensor things, and they're just like. What is Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we come to the most recent film we've seen. Uh, that's Freaky Friday. We watched the, the, the 2003 Freaky Friday. We watched it on the 20th anniversary, uh, which is just a few days ago. Which is, which is just an amazing moment of serendipity for us. Yeah. Uh, we somehow managed to spin this movie right when the 20th anniversary of it rolled around. Yeah. Um, it's good. This it's is good. a really, it's, really it's, good movie. Yeah, aside from the little dicky music video, of course, it's probably the best take on the Freaky Friday concept. <laughs> yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis is the star of this movie. Oh, absolutely. By, She's so by far. She, like, uh, Lindsay Lohan's performance is serviceable. It's good. It's fine. She's, she's good. It's fine. She's trying... Yeah. She's, it's cute. She's trying her best. But Jamie Lee Curtis is so fucking good at embodying a teenage girl in this film. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love the scene. I fucking love a lot of scenes in this movie, but I fucking love the scene where she's trying to be, you know, the, like the fucking psychiatrist for all these people. It's just like, it's like, it made me feel so depressed. And how does that make you feel? Depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, yeah. And then, and then there's the, and then at the end of the scene, it's just like, well, I read my daughter's diary, and she's like, wait, you read her diary? And then she just proceeds to trauma dump all of her teenage angst onto this poor woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, she's, but she's and got, so but, actually, but, but, yeah. yeah, but she's got a point. So like, you know, no, yeah, I, I think. I think that I, I yeah, this movie is very, this movie is very funny. It's got a lot of two thousands edge and energy. But it's also <laughs> very smart about how it broaches the subject of, you know, empathy and understanding other people's positions and everybody's got their own shit going on. Uh, particularly because both of, both characters learn to empathize with other people around them before those lessons start being applied to each other. Oh, yeah. In a the end. real... Yeah, a real standout moment in that regard mm -hmm. is when... Uh, Lindsay Lohan's character in 
uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's body, yeah. has to go to like a like a parent teacher meeting about uh, the brother character who's you know having trouble in school and he's a little brat and like throughout the movie, uh, throughout the entire movie, this this little kid has been like you know antagonizing the sister and you know kind of causing a lot of trouble. But it turns out he actually really likes her, but he's a stupid little kid and he doesn't want to, like, mm-hmm. let her know that. And yeah, he's yeah. just like, and I love the fucking moment where it's just like, why don't you just tell her that you like her? It's like, but we have so much fun fighting each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, he just, and he writes this really sweet little, little, little letter in class about how much he loves his sister. And yeah. it's just such a great moment. Yeah, yeah, the stuff like that, and how she learns to empathize um, with her shockingly patient stepdad. Um, oh, dude, real MVP of that movie right there, like, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was shockingly patient with all of this yeah, bullshit. Yeah, and the mom and her body, um, you know, learns more about her circumstances through dealing with her uh, childhood bully and dealing with her friends and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it it it's 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 really it's smart and it's it's heartfelt and it's very funny. Um, I think we had we had two little n- niggles that held it back a little bit. Um, one is that this movie is about five percent racist, maybe. <laughs> it it's got a little bit of you know early two thousands we don't understand Asian culture thing going on. It's not it's not mean spirited or anything, but it's very Maggie Chow, if that makes sense. Yeah. You get fortune cookie. <laughs> yeah. It's a little Maggie Chow. Um the, the the ancient Chinese magic fortune cookie. <laughs> now it is funny and I like I don't I don't think that element is bad or anything. I wouldn't change anything about it conceptually. I just think in the execution it could have been a little less Maggie Chow. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other thing is that the is that Jake is kind of borderline stalking in this movie. Yeah, especially near the end, where it's just like every single time he shows up, you're just like, dude, fucking get a clue. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad, or it's not bad. It's just I feel like that could have been written a little bit better, or it could have been contextualized uh, better, or just been a little bit less egregious with it. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely see people looking at that and not getting the intended effect of it because um, he's just so damn persistent. <laughs> um, Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, don't. It's not. It's not to be. It's not meant to be taken that seriously. But like, those are like some kind of niggles with it. I would probably. I'd probably put this at the probably right about. I, I enjoy it more than Catch Me If You Can. I, I, I do actually like this a lot more than Catch Me With You than you can, Catch Me If You Can because honestly, Freaky Friday had me laughing my ass off throughout most of the movie. <laughs> yeah, like I don't think it quite reaches cinema tier just because the cinematic aspect is kind of lacking. It's it's definitely you know a Disney Channel original film or whatever you know. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was definitely one of those like kind of low to mid budget Disney movies that they kind of threw out uh, to kind of pad out their schedule. But for that kind of movie, it's really really well done. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd, I'd say top of dope ass times if yeah. I'm correct. Well, let's see, we're still recording. And yes, we are. Okay. Um, so, so, sorry, Steven Spielberg, you've been beaten by Freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Better luck next time. Um, kick ass. Kick ass! This movie kicks ass. Yeah, this movie's kick ass. No, the, it's... the title of the movie accurately reflects my enjoyment of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's good. Um, it's good. It's got it's got good characters. It's got um, a fun. It's got a fun premise. It's got good energy to it. The script the script is witty. It's got um, a nice edge. Yeah, it's got some edge to it. I like that. Um, I fuck. I fucking love the scene near the end where Hit Girl just takes out all the people who um, took Kick Ass hostage, and one of his friends is just like, "Oh man, I can." It's like, "Oh man, I'm so in love with her." Isn't she like ten? Shit, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she's. I think she's twelve here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. that? You know they actually do get together in the sequel. Oh really? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This, yeah, that's that's a whole other story, but yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, I, I, it's really fun. It's got great Nick Cage performance in it. Um, Dude, Nick Cage is really fun in this movie, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also, I would actually argue that this is better than the, I've read the comic it's based on. I think this, the, the, the movie is a bit better because it's not quite as depressingly cynical as the comic was. Now, Nor that's a, that's, Nor that's a problem with a lot of, that is, that, is, that is, to be fair, a problem with a lot of Mark Miller comics. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Now, normally I don't really like it, normally I don't really like it when a Hollywood adaptation of something, like, makes it, you know, less cynical or, like, makes it, brightens it up a bit, but I feel like in this specific instance, I kind of like how it was done here a bit better. Like, it was kind of necessary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I put, I put it probably about, about there, I'd say. Like B it, bottom of this is cinema because it actually has some really good uh, staging and some really good choreography. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it reaches kind of the. It, it's definitely better than Freaky Friday. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hot tub time machine. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this movie. Actually, it's so it's really funny. <laughs> It's a really funny, really smartly written time travel movie, actually. Yeah. Um, it's which, again, not it's, what you would expect from a movie called Hot Tub Time Machine. It's It's got some poignant, resonant themes. It does, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also got um, It's also got Duke Clark, who we lo fucking love Duke Clark. And we he fucking love a... Duke Clark, and we will be talking about him again later. <laughs> yeah, uh... No, it's like it's like it's like it's like raunchy and hilarious in all the right ways. Um, I really, I really like, I really like it. I would put it. Uh, pro probably like ahead of the Kevin Smith stuff. Uh, I would actually put it. Um, yeah, I'll put it ahead of Clark's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zombie Land. Zombie Land. Uh, yet another movie that uh, I. This, this was another movie where I said I had never seen it, and you and Sheridan proceeded to just absolutely trash me for it. Yeah. So, so we put it on the following week. It's pretty iconic, man. Uh, you know. I think I think this is the last movie we did before we inst we instated the wheel. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. No. It's got. It's great. It's it's great. It's got great. Um, it's got great chemistry and camaraderie between its four lead characters. Um, the the zombie rules are a lot of fun. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's most it's mostly held up by that chemistry and its comedy. The actual plot is just kind of whatever. Um, the actual plot is fairly standard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best way I can describe this movie is it's 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 the closest we are ever going to get to a Left for Dead film. Yeah. <laughs> and that is absolutely a good thing. Yeah. Um. I would put this... Honestly, I would put this between Clerks and Dogma. Interesting. Personally. Interesting. Because I think Clerks has slightly better comedy. Yeah. Um, but I think Zombieland has more consistency in its pacing and in its enjoyment level compared to Dogma. Alright. Yeah. Uh, Eurotrip. I saw the first half of this and then my internet cut out. <laughs> Yeah, which is super, super unfortunate. This is a surprisingly... This, this is yet another one of those um, mid-2000s, like, uh, stoner road trip comedies that we watched. We, we watched a good few of those. Yeah. Um, which is fine. It's kind of like, you know, cinematic comfort food. Mm -hmm. um, Eurotrip is one of the better examples I can think of. This is a very fun road trip movie that takes a great advantage of its surprisingly varied locations um it's got some really good edge it's got some really good edgy humor i quite like the main cast of this movie um i don't think it's i don't think the cast is quite as strong as a couple of the other uh road trip movies that we have on here i'll we'll, we'll get to my personal favorite yeah it's, later. yeah it doesn't have duke clark uh, that's a big that's a big negative yeah but i do quite like euro trip um i will put this uh, right, I'll put it right above Small Soldiers. Alright. Yeah. I'll put Rio Trip right about there. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, dude, where's my car? I did, I was here for this one. This one's fucking you funny. You were here. Oh my god. This movie is, 
again, this is a this is an early two thousands movie, and I believe, certainly feels I, like I it. believe it is the it is two thousand. I think it is a two thousand movie. It is at that uh, it is at that crossroads between the millennia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so fucking funny in a way that a major Hollywood film would never be anymore. Yeah. It's also it's also a little weird though, in that. It's trying to be um, a little bit more progressive and a little bit more understanding compared to a lot of. I think it's. At the time. I, I think its heart was in the right place. I'm not going to knock it, it was, too much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to knock it too much for that, but I love the main cast of this movie, and I just oh, yeah. love the absurdity of how the how the plot unfolds and unravels as the film goes on. Mm-hmm. This is uh, one of the all time stoner comedies. Dude, I need to watch this movie while blazed. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm honestly. I probably put it. I probably put it above Freaky Friday. Honestly. Uh, I didn't like it. I'm not sure if I liked it as much as Freaky Friday mm, though. Um, here. Uh, here. Yeah, we'll put it right. There. Is it better or worse than Hot Tub Time Machine? I would say it's. Probably about on par. All right, we'll just leave it there then. Yeah, we'll we'll leave, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Motherfucking Ted. Ted. Ah, uh, yes, the, uh, the the movie made by the Family Guy creator that is a uh, Family Guy with a teddy bear. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's very funny. Um, it's a very. It's funny very movie. funny, and then the last third is surprisingly dramatic. <laughs> This, yeah, this is another one of those movies where the third act just goes off the rails in the best way. Yeah, uh, I feel like this was, I feel like this was kind of a personal uh, pet story of Seth MacFarlane's, and I can really appreciate that. You can really tell that Seth MacFarlane had a very clear point with this movie. It's very much in the same vein as, oddly, it, it shares some thematic similarities with Lego Movie 2. Yeah, yeah. In terms of holding on to that part of your childhood that's special to you and important. Yeah. And not trying to feel, and not trying to be, you know, be so much of an adult adult. I really love that element of Ted. I think it's really well done for, like, if Lego Movie 2 was perfect for that as a kid's film, mm-hmm. Ted is perfect for doing that theme as a film yeah, made for it's, it's really it's really funny it's really heartfelt there's some good character writing between Ted and uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg's character I think his name's Scotty is it Scott? I think so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Mark Mark Wahlberg is surprisingly good in this movie that, that is also true and Mila Kunis is in it uh, she's really good and um, fucking um, if, if you're a Flash Gordon fan somehow still in this day and age you might get a kick out of some parts <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, yeah, it's Which, a, it's a solid. It's also got a fucking hilarious pair of villains. I love them so much. Oh, absolutely, God. Uh, I would just like the the fucking the fucking kid character is just so fucking unhinged. Is it better than Dude Wears My Car? <laughs> it's better than Dude Wears My Car, absolutely. I would, I would you put would it against? Say it. I would say it's better than Catch Me If You Can. Okay, I put it. I, I would actually there. put it there. Fuck you, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane's better than you. <laughs> okay, here's an interesting one. Wonder. Uh, this was so, one Elena picked for us. Um, yes, uh, this was no, recommended by uh, a longtime friend of ours. Yeah, uh, Drawing Girl ninety four. Yeah. Now, um, he, now here's something I will say about Wonder. I had a magnificent time watching it with a group of friends ripping the shit out of it but yeah. if I was just watching I think that is coloring it to be better than it is and if I was watching it by myself I might be a bit bored by it it's a very sweet movie it's a very cute movie Yeah. Um, I actually really like Augie I think yeah, Augie's a yeah. really good protagonist in this movie uh, yeah no I like how uh, I like how uh, he, he's, a, he's, he's a kid character that's actually written to respect a kid's intelligence and wit that I really like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love how Augie isn't, like, going into this movie, I was very scared that Augie would just be this, like, meek and shy and, No, but know, he's like a normal kid. He's got, no. he, he's got flaws and virtues and idiosyncrasies. Um, yeah. This kid plays Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Yeah, no, and the other kids are, are, uh, are well-written for their ages, and, um, I, I think... I think where the film loses me a bit is that the the stories that aren't Augie's aren't as interesting. 
Um, that is totally fair. This is very much a movie based around the strength of Augie as a protagonist. Yeah, and this film tries to focus on the entire family, which is which is cool. I like that it does that, but I feel like the other family members aren't quite as developed or interesting. That's completely fair, and I do agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, I would probably it, put it at the top of Saul Wright. I can agree there. Because, like, again, I'm going to give this movie a lot of credit for having just a very strong lead protagonist that helps mm -hmm. to carry the film. Yeah. But it does have it a number yeah. of lull spaces throughout the yeah. movie when it's focusing on other um, on other cast members. Yeah. Also, it's also uh, very kitschy. It's a very kitschy film. It is, admittedly. Yeah. But it's... It's kind of a good kind of kitsch. It's very feel good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that said, there's a far better movie that I can say has like a feel good vibe to it later, uh, and I'll get to that one. I'll right. That one. The Terminator. I didn't see this uh, one. I think I was. What was I sick? I think. You were sick, and it was so like you. We we actually postponed the movie for a week because uh, you were having like some kind of an issue, and then the second week. You were just like in a piss poor mood that day. You were just like, watch it without me. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to get you to watch this movie sometime. Right. Terminator is a really fun. This is a really good action thriller. Right. Uh, it is one of the classic 80s action thrillers. Uh, I think yeah. it holds up remarkably. Yeah, I don't well. think anyone else, anyone aside from me, needs to be told why the Terminator is good. So let's just skip the fucking. Where would you put it? Just tell me. <laughs> I. I think it, the problem here is that my favorite Terminator movie isn't listed. Yeah. But I don't want to diminish how good the first Terminator is. I will put this at the end of this cinema. All right. I think it has. I do think it has really strong cinematography. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is like peak grungy, gritty '80s uh, street level movie. I see. And it's real. It's really good. It's really good. Um, right. Attack the block. I was there, but I was I was only listening. I was playing the video game. I wish you were paying attention to this movie. This is such a cool modern alien invasion flick. Yeah, I don't know it's, why I wasn't. I think I just wasn't in the mood for a movie, so I just showed up at obligation that night. Yeah, this is a super smart, super well done. Uh, very British a uh, alien invasion movie. And by very British, I'm not talking like, you know, posh upper class British. I am talking a lot, uh, I'm talking about actual fucking Britain. Like, actual fucking UK. Yeah, yeah, like, like, uh, like Shaun of the these Dead. These are punks. Yeah, these are punks. Yeah. And this movie has just such a great energy to it. The cast is so fun. God. John Boyega. This is the movie you need to watch if you want to see John Boyega at his best. Fuck Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have an um, opinion here, so where would you put it? I... It's so good, though. Um, I would say this is cinema, actually. Um, I would put this below Karate Kid. This oh. one is right below Karate Kid. I actually like it a little more than the original Terminator, actually. Oh, uh, oh. Weird. And mind you... I grew up with Terminator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. The meme movie, American Psycho. Yes. It's it's worth watching. I I think... I don't think it's... It's not fantastic, I say. I think it's a little too... What's the word I'm looking for? It's a bit too... It's weird to say this about a film that has one protagonist that it exclusively focuses on, but it's very vignette -y. It is. Uh, I also think it suffers ever so slightly from being a bit vague in terms of what it's actually trying to achieve with the character and what the end of the movie is supposed to be. It's very much one of those endings of, we've given you the pieces, piece it together yourself, but depending on how you want to view it, it's like, you can come up with like five different interpretations of the what thing, just The happened. problem, there's a, there's a lot of stories where that, make, that ambiguity can work and make sense. With this story, I feel like instead of it's not interesting enough to leave it open for that kind of wild speculation and uh intrigue and stuff like that i think on i think what it ends up doing is it's being like okay here's like one of like two or three interpretations and none of them are super satisfying so yet 
to give you an idea of like how this movie was actually made and the kind of vibe it has, uh, there's a scene where uh, Willem Dafoe's character um, is interrogating Jason Bateman. Yeah. And uh, the scene was actually filmed three different ways. Uh, one, as if uh, Willem Dafoe's character didn't know he was the killer. Yeah. Uh, one, as if he only suspected he was the killer. And one, uh, as if he knew for certain he was the killer. Yeah. And then the editor proceeded to mix and match those three takes, and that which is, results in the end product. Which is interesting, but it's also, it feels like a movie that was made to be artsy and vague for the sake of being artsy and vague, and not necessarily with any kind of direct, poignant point in mind. Uh, it feels yeah, like yeah. it feels like they had some loose ideas in mind of what, what this could mean, or what this what you're supposed to take away from it. And then they're like, whatever interpretation makes the film the best for you, just go with that one. You know, it doesn't feel as purposeful as I would like something like this to be. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like this movie, after a point, kind of loses itself. Which is maybe sacrilegious to say, but that's just kind of how I came out of the movie feeling, honestly. I really liked it, but not enough to put it in, like, the dope ass time category, personally. Right, would you put it, like, right here? I would personally put it above GoldenEye on a personal level. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to all five million of the fans of American Psycho, but it, I just didn't quite vibe with it that strongly. Right. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption, I was not there. I think I had something else to do. Top of this is cinema, right now. If you say so, I, 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 I don't have an opinion. Okay, 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 okay. But for real... Shawshank Redemption is super fucking good. I am so... This is another one of those movies I'm so sad you were not there for. Yeah. This is a movie that, like... Oh, man. Oh man. This is a perfectly written movie, and it's just so perfectly uh, well done. It has one of my favorite uh, Morgan Freeman performances. Mm -hmm. um, I love the way that this movie... It, it feels like it starts off a little bit meandering at the beginning, yeah. like, for the first hour, because, you know, it's mostly just setting up uh, the setting, which is a prison. It's setting up all the main characters, uh, the kind of things that they go through mm -hmm. uh, in this particular setting. Um, and then it goes through uh, the main character, who is uh, one of the two main characters. Um, the second... Uh, God, I need to look up who the fuck plays the other character. It's a great, it's a great oh, movie. I, I don't remember it. anything about it. No, motherfucker, shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of an actor. Uh, Tim Robbins, yeah. Oh. Uh, Tim Robbins' character in this movie is... He's like... He's not the focal character, but he is the character who drives the plot. Sure. And um, his character, like... It is amazing watching him make a life for himself within the prison system while also building up for uh, what he ends up doing later in the movie. won't spoil a damn thing. But um, this is absolutely one of those movies you should go in as blind as possible to. Sure. Um, I love the cast of this movie. I love the... Uh, the, the prison setting is surprisingly really good. Because um, mostly it's just... it's it is populated with just a bunch of really good characters that have their own individual stories running at the same time. This movie doesn't feel bloated at all, but it's got, like, some very good uh, subplots running all at the same time that intersect and interweave with each other. Mm -hmm. You kind of understand... Uh, you get to understand where all these characters came from, why they're here, and what they're trying to do to make life better for themselves within the prison system. Sure. Um, and it has... One of the most emotionally satisfying endings I've seen in a movie. Mm. Um, this movie just it like this movie ends in a way in the way that you would hope it would, which is the best thing I can say about it. Mm. Um, okay, but for real though, uh, I would actually put it slightly below Knives Out okay. personally. But like, Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite movies that we've done for movie night. Right. Um, I absolutely adored it. Right. Uh, Kingsman Secret Service. I was also not here for this one. Trust me. I, I okay. Just just to rest assure everyone, I've seen most of the rest of these. Yeah, yeah. Like we've just done like a fucking line of two or three that he was not here for. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Kingsman. 
This movie has has one of the, some of the most wild fucking action scenes in any movie I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie is carried by having strong action, good humor, and just excellent music choices. Also, very strong performances. Uh, one of the best performances I've seen from Samuel L. Jackson because it's a type of character you wouldn't expect him to play. He is a neurotic. Uh, guy with a lisp who hates looking at who hates seeing blood <laughs> I see <laughs> who is the who is the CEO of a major tech firm who's trying to weed out uh, who's trying to weed out uh, all of the lower class citizens and try to make the world uh, a paradise for the wealthy and rich uh, and Ooh. the main character has to stop him it's really fucking fun um, but how fucking this, fun uh, I will put this. Da, 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 uh, put it above Attack the Block. It's right above Attack the Block for me. All right. I really like it. All right. Also, also, the chapel scene. If you know, you know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> All right. Uh, Duncan Jones's 2009 Sam Rockwell's Moon. Uh, yes, I loved watching Sam Rockwell talk to himself for 95 minutes. Uh, Moon is so fucking good. It is! I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, uh, it, it's a hard movie to talk about without spoiling it. Um, but uh, if you if you like speculative sci-fi and you like um, uh, great looking uh, movies with great performances and you, you want something a little mind-bendy, just a, just a bit, um, Moon is fantastic. I, I would I would I would honestly put Moon. I'm not gonna put it above Shawshank because I haven't seen it, but I put it like right about here. Okay, that's fair. What do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's about there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I'd probably be more up to watch Super Eight again, but I think Moon is an artistically it slightly edges it out artistically. Yeah, I could agree there. It has it has a bit more to say, I think. Yeah. Um, the sadness. This mm, was. This, I feel like this is fun. <laughs> I feel like you vibe with this movie a bit more than I did. Um, I still vibe with it. I still thought it was really good. Um, this movie is disgusting, though. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's fucking. Oh, bad. this movie is violent in all the fun ways. I love it. Um, oh my god. Yeah. No. I think it has. Um, the story isn't amazing, but it's good enough. Um, the practical effects work is fantastic. I love how it's shot. I love the location of... Um, this is somewhere in Southeast Asia, I believe. Um, no, I, I really like the sadness. Uh, I will I will concede it's not for everyone. Yeah, um, like, this, this is the kind of film where you, you need to be in the mood for a really weird, fucked up horror film. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm a, we didn't actually watch as many of my weird horror films as I would have liked, um, this year. Don't worry, they're coming. Um, oh yeah, it, it, it's, it's the nature of the wheel. Yeah, I, I, I have, I have two things I populate the wheel with mostly, uh, ra- uh raunchy, raunchy 2000s comedies and, uh, gory horror films. Yeah. Um, I... Try, trying to leverage how I think most people would see this with how I see it, I would put it. I put it right above Dudes Over My Car. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It is a very good movie, though. Uh, I will not knock that. Yeah. But it is a it is a very it is a kind of movie where you need to be in a very particular mood for it. Yeah. Sex Drive, unrated and cream filled edition. Hey, remember how I said that there was a better road trip uh, stoner comedy yeah. that I was going to talk about? This is the one. <laughs> this movie Sex is Drive... unhinged in all the best ways. The funny thing about Sex Drive Unrated and Cream Filled is that you can tell just by watching it where a lot of the additions comparative to the theatrical version are because it very much feels like they just threw all the extra uh, oh, yeah. things that they had this lying ver- around. This, this version literally starts with the directors walking on screen and telling you not to watch this version. <laughs> Yeah, but the but thing fuck is, fuck you. I think that makes it funnier. 
the thing is, I kind of like the vibe that this this version of the movie has. I have not seen the theatrical version, and honestly, having seen this version, I'm not sure <coughs> if I want to. Yeah, the uh, the sex drive experience just isn't the same unless there's just random fucking PNGs of topless women walking across the screen at random. Yeah, like this is just a super fun, super weird movie that happens to have Seth Green as a uh, as an Amish person who knows how to do mechanic work. And love uh, sarcasm. And love sarcasm. Like, literally it, every fucking every fucking line out of Seth Green's mouth in this movie has, like, three layers of doublespeak. <laughs> yeah. As, as far as movies about road trips to, to get pussy, you can't do much better than this one. You, you really can't, honestly. It, it was a sex drive. I will give it that. I... Because I don't think it's as strong character-wise, I'm going to put it below Freaky Friday and Ted, right about there. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, it follows. I, I, not... I still fi I fi I find it really funny what we consider better to be a... Be, what we <laughs> consider to be better than a Steven Spielberg movie here. <laughs> Sex Drive, Ted, and Freaky Friday. <laughs> it follows. I had not seen this. I wish I had. And now I have, and it's good. It's really good. Oh, did you watch it on your own time? It follows? No, I, oh, I, I watched it oh, with you. Oh, right, right. Okay, you were, okay, yeah, this is one of the ones you were actually here for. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, this, uh, this is why you take contraceptives, people. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it has, a, it has a fun setup. It's great cinematography and performances. It has a very... It has a unique atmosphere. Uh, great soundtrack. Um... And uh, I especially love the ambiguity of its time period and how it, f it has that dreamlike quality to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would put this quite high. I would, I would put this probably... Would you, would you put it above Terminator? Um, I'd put it, like, slightly above Terminator, sure. I kind of like a... Mm, pick a... I'll put it below kick ass. Right about there. Okay. Uh, expelled from Paradise. <sighs> I don't like how this film looks, first of all. Um, I think it's a better looking CG anime than a very vast majority of other CG anime out there. Um, but it no, still I, has a bit of that. I feel like you could say that for when it came out, but I feel like we they've made leaps and bounds since then. That is true. This Trigon movie stampede exists. Yeah, this movie <laughs> looks fucking ugly to look at. This movie runs at like t twelve FPS. Yeah, it's got a lot of that, uh, a lot of that janky movement going on. Um, and I didn't think the film was interesting enough to really make up for that. I think it, at the very least, has a strong main duo. Um, it has a strong main duo and solid action scenes. I didn't find the plot nearly as engaged uh, honestly looking back the plot isn't nearly as engaging as i think it wants to be mm -hmm. um it is really propped up by strong performances from the main from the two main characters i don't remember anything other than the two main characters and the action scenes honestly yeah uh i pu i put this in sol right i uh put it below brave little toaster right there I, I, I'm, I'm putting Freebirds after... above it. Fuck, I had more fun with Freebirds. Yeah, that's fair. I do remember more about Freebirds, admittedly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alita Battle Angel. You know, if if Saradin was here, then he would probably argue for it to be a little bit higher, but like, eh, I don't know. Well, he's not, know. so fuck him. Alita Battle sure. Angel. <laughs> Uh, I actually quite like Alita Battle Angel. I do have some issues with its pacing. Yeah, it's not um, super well-paced. It's it has an issue of a, a number of elements being underdeveloped, yeah, and feeling some, like it's rushing through. Some scenes but. are just outright hokey, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the stuff that this works works. Like I think the action looks nice. I think the film sets up an interesting world and setting, and I think the main character is is likable and like her like the the people are likable and whatnot. Um, yeah, Alita, Alita herself is really cool. Um, yeah. That said, I wasn't wowed. I was just kind of like, oh, that was, you know, you know. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that a film like this came from, like, a major fucking director and everything. Um, but, uh... 
Uh, yeah, I'm a. I'm gonna put it in dope ass time somewhere, but I don't know where. If, where. Yeah, like the big difference between dope ass time and sell right to me is can I watch this movie more than once and enjoy myself with it? Mm -hmm. And I have seen Alita more than once and enjoyed myself both times, so it goes in dope ass time. I would put it probably a right up. Uh, I'd put it like where would you put it? Where would you put it? Ah, uh, this is a hard one to write because. I would say it's probably... I would put it in between... Um, uh, in between Agent Cody Banks and Euro Trip for me. Okay. Well, that makes it easier uh, for me. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Piranha 3D. <laughs> oh, my God. I think we described this movie best as uh, it finds all the ways you can think of to show... Uh, Piranha's killing people, naked people, and Piranha's killing naked people. <laughs> yeah, this film is... This film is so fun. It is a fun, like... It makes gore pulpy. so fucking fun. Yeah, it's pulpy, it's gory. I, 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 I love it. it. This is just... This is just super creative in all the ways it finds to showcase characters getting maimed this horribly. Is, yeah, this is almost the best movie to watch with other people. Um, yeah, because you're just you're just sitting back and just laughing at the at the movie the whole time, but you're laughing with it. Yeah, you know? I think because of its higher ambition, I'm gonna put it above Sex Drive, but it doesn't have the same character writing as Freaky Friday or Ted's. I'm gonna put it below those. That's completely fair. Uh, this also has one of the funniest uses of 3D. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it definitely earns that R rating. It definitely does. Yeah. Uh, Lupin the first to the third. I was not here for this That's, one. Yeah, Lupin. So this movie, Lupin the third, the first. Right. The yeah, right. Right. Third. Lupin the, the first. The. The, the the thing is, even having seen this movie, I don't know why they named it that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the last one this, I haven't. I hadn't seen them. Uh, this is the last one yeah. I didn't watch on this list. Uh, Lupin the third, the first is a pretty damn good Lupin the third movie. Um... If you haven't seen Lupin, it's actually a pretty good introductory movie. Well, to, I didn't know that, because you know. it says the third one. It, it's a joke, people. He, he's making a joke. It's a constant, <laughs> like, running gag. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty good movie, actually. Um, it's very visually, uh, very visually appealing, considering it's a... The thing is, a lot of Japanese anime movies, a lot of, like, Japanese CG anime movies don't look terribly great. Mm -hmm. This one takes the, uh, takes the, uh, this one takes the, uh, approach of looking more like a Pixar movie. Yeah. And I mean that in the best way. It is a very nice looking movie, and it translates the designs of Lupin into 3D very well. Um... I don't think it's quite as tightly written as a number of other Lupin movies, and I don't think it's quite as tightly written as, I think, basically all of the films in This Is Cinema currently. I would put this between Ted and Freaky Friday, personally. Wow, um, I really liked it, uh, and it also has Surprise Hitler at the end of the movie. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah, yeah. Not not what you would expect for a main villain there. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Princess Mononoke... I had not seen this before, and now I have. Um, it's okay. <laughs> of the Miyazaki movie, of the films that Miyazaki has made, this is the one that is probably the strongest on a cinematography, writing, and thematic level. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's not my personal favorite of his. I actually like I am, of his older movies. A bit I am more. not a Ghibli Miyazaki guy. Um, so, by that, by that stretch, this is probably the film of his I like the most, but that's not saying a whole lot. Yeah, so, I actually quite like Miyazaki, and I, uh, appreciate his works quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I would put this, um, probably, I, I would put this in This Is Cinema tier, and I would put it above It Follows. But where would you put it? Uh, if it, 
if it were up to me, I'd probably put it around where Alita is, but uh, I think just out of respect for its legacy, I will, I will, uh, I will do, okay. I will, I will do as you want. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? Let's split the difference here and put it above Catch Me If You Can because it's just really funny yeah. to be putting other movies above a Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently a lot of people can catch it and, and run past him. <laughs> okay, Batman versus TMNT. Ah... <sighs> So, I think you admitted that you weren't quite in the mood for this movie when we actually watched it. Yeah, but it's also, even just speaking objectively here, I don't know, I just, I don't think it's as clever or fun as the premise would invite. I don't know, I quite liked a lot of the uh, combination, I, I quite liked how uh, elements of turtle... Uh, elements of turtle storytelling and Batman storytelling uh, converged in this film. Uh, sure. I I actually really liked a lot of the uh, fun mutations that happened with uh, Batman's rogues gallery. Mm. Poison Ivy is really Poison Ivy is really funny because she's a plant literally rooted to the ground, so they just walk around her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do like that moment. It's one of those things where they kind of it, they they kind of weighed. Do we have a really cool boss fight scene here, or we do, or do we just go for a really funny joke? And it's like we have seventy five minutes to work with here. Let's just go for the joke, and I think the joke is pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it's. I do. I, I think it's got some strong action scenes, uh, especially later on when uh, during the final fight with um, like Batman, the Shredder, Ra's al Ghul, Leonardo, and shit. Um, I think it says a lot about how dour my mood was at, at the time that I, I was more bored by this than I was by Goldeneye <laughs> um, that says quite a bit yeah Yeah. so if it were up to me I'd put it probably like the top of it's alright um, but what do you think I quite like it but I think I'll respect your opinion there it's probably not as good would you put it at the bottom uh, of dope ass or I I put it at the bottom of dope ass, sure. Okay. Like if we're splitting the difference, I'd put it at the bottom of dope ass, yeah. Alright. Ch -ch 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 Chip Bandale! Rescue Rangers! Rescue Ch -ch -ch Bandale! When there's danger! When there's danger! This movie fucks. Surprisingly really fun, surprisingly really smart movie. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed myself quite a bit. This movie is weird and bizarre. And an affront and, and an affront to copyright law everywhere. <laughs> it's fun. It's 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 Roger Rabbit too. What more do you want? Yeah, like it's. I really like this movie a lot. It's got some really good cinematography. It's got a surprisingly good plot. I actually really like. Uh, people are people complained about the whole uh, mm -hmm. comparisons between uh, Pete and uh, Bobby Driscoll. The uh, real life actor for Peter Pan, but mm -hmm. one, a lot of that was unintentional. And two, I think the parallel actually makes the themes of the movie stronger. Yeah, and I think it makes it work a lot better. Yeah, uh, right. I I think there's enough. I think the script could have been sharper, could have been funnier, and I think the production could have been a bit nicer. So for those reasons, I'm gonna put it like at the top of dope ass time. I don't think it quite yeah, reaches the cinema threshold, but it is a really fun. It was really fun. It is knocking on the door of this cinema, so I will agree with putting on the top of dope ass time. Yeah, I, I really liked it. All right, uh, lyrical Nanaha, the movie first. Who wants another differing opinion? <laughs> it was all right, honestly. Like I, like I, I, it held my attention pretty well, actually. I, I yeah. would, I would, I would, I, I think it escapes Saul Wright for me. Yeah, um, this movie has admittedly some pacing issues, but I think pacing issues that this movie has are better than the ones for the TV series it's based on. Uh, because which, is, which is really it's really frustrating because I actually was somewhat intrigued by Nanaha as a property by this film, but then the way you describe trying to get into it sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> Honestly, the only the only thing I would say is watch this movie as a replacement for the first season and then watch the TV series right. after, after this. Like, just go for Nanaha A's onward and you're fine. Right. Um, I think I gave it. I think I gave it a six out of ten just because I felt like a lot of elements seemed rushed, 
Um, yeah. Um, that said, this movie is this movie has really strong production value, though. I love the animation in this movie. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Uh, the, the action scenes are fantastic. Um, this is really where the movie shines, in my opinion. Is it has a really good. Um, I really, I, I love the central conflict between uh, Fate and Nanoha. Yeah, I love Fate as a character. I love. Oh yeah, she's definitely uh, the, the best part of story. Fate her. is definitely the best part of the movie. Yeah, by far. Um, another reason why this movie is better than the TV series than the TV season it's based on is because half of the villain's backstory is exclusive to this movie, and mm-hmm. was originally only shown in a radio drama. Uh, like I said, it feels kind of like a mess. <laughs> yeah, but I still really love this movie. Yeah. I this mean movie like is very I mean close to my heart. Yeah, I mean like it's 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 anime urban fantasy. You'd have to try really hard for me to not like it at all. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh I I would put this above catch me if you can. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that sounds good to me. It's just fucking funny. I can agree with that. <laughs> it's just so funny. The, now I want to put the sadness <laughs> higher though. Okay, yeah, put Sadness above Princess Mononoke. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll That's put it, better. I'll put it above Sex Drive. There we go. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sex Drive, but... Sorry, sadness sorry is- Sex Drive, oh, have you tried having more murder? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Black Fox. This is fun. It's, it's, a fun. it's a pretty fun movie. It's fun. I had a good time with it's it. Fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's it, enjoyable. It was supposed to be a one core anime, and it definitely feels like it probably should have been. But it's it's fine for what it is. For a salvaged for, project, it, it turns out all right. For what it is and what it was trying to accomplish in as short of a time as it had, I think it actually did quite well in uh, quite well in that. Yeah. Um, I think it's just it's one of those things where like if you just want to sit down and watch just a fun, cool anime movie, this is this is good. This is good. Good. Pop this on. Pop this on. Have a good yeah. time. I just feel a little bit. I lament the single, the the probably really concise single core we, uh, season we could have had, because I feel like there was definitely yeah. a lot of room to expand on this film. Um, oh yeah, as was the original plan, but that didn't come. So here we are. Here we are. Uh, I would yeah. probably I- put this. I think as a standalone, it's probably better than Nanaha. Um, yeah, that's fair. Um, I would put it right above Nanaha. Sure. Yeah, right about there. I, th- I think that's perfect. I liked there. it more than Mononoke, but I'll respect Kevin's opinion on that one. I like Mononoke more, so like I yeah. I cannot in good conscience put it above that. <laughs> yeah, Paul. I feel like this movie do- this movie drags at- for like twenty minutes in the middle, but otherwise it's really really good. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It has uh, I love the camaraderie between Nick um, uh, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and Seth Rogen's Paul. Really I feel good. Like one Simon of Simon the- Pe- I. I feel like a Simon Pegg Nick Frost comedy is like that is a combination that you can't go wrong with. Yeah. Um, and this is very much in that vein. And I believe I, it's written by them. Yeah, and I I feel like yeah. a Seth Rogen alien is about the best compliment you could give that pair. Yeah, this this movie has very similar. I, vibes I'm a, I'm a guy like, who, I'm a guy who actually likes Seth Rogen, and I think this is one of the better Seth Rogen roles. Oh yeah, I I fucking. I fucking really like him in this movie. I think uh, Paul is actually a very fun, very, very sympathetic character in Paul, this movie. Paul actually. is Paul is the heart of this film. Um, he really is. Yeah. Surprisingly, like a, a much more emotionally uh, vulnerable character than what you would expect from Seth Rogen to play, and I mean that in like the best way possible. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I think it has great. It's, it's really funny. It has great character drama. It's a fun road trip movie. Even like even like the female sidekick has like an interesting character arc um, that I really like. Uh, true. Usually, true. usually like just the throw in love interest in these in this kind of movie would be kind of whatever. But no, she's actually like she's got a fun character arc and she's part of the group, you know. Um, yet it's another a lot- one of these movie. Yet another one of the, these movies that we saw that has uh, commentary on organized religion. <laughs> yeah, which is basically just fuck religion, which I can I can yeah. get I can get behind. Uh, I think this is better than Freaky Friday, honestly. Really now? Yeah, I really like Paul. I, you know what? I can agree there. I think it's got slightly stronger character uh, character mm-hmm. writing, and I think it has a slightly stronger uh, overall. Plot it's than also Freaky got Friday. It's also got Sigourney Weaver as a really funny funny villain. 
It does, and that's always. Oh, good. and it's got fucking uh, what's what's his name? Uh, not John Mulaney, but the guy who kind of looks like him, Bill Hader, I think. Yeah, Bill. H- yeah, Bill Hader's in this movie. Oh this my! One, too. one of my favorite things when the dad comes, I was like, I'm on a mission from God, and then the guy just shoots him in the face, like, tell him you failed. <laughs> <It's> fucking great. <laughs> I fucking love it so much. No, oh, Paul, yeah. Paul is fantastic. Uh, rubber. Uh, if, I have it, some mixed opinions on this. If, <laughs> if there's one movie we watched this year that I had to call Ugh, it's probably Rubber. The problem with Rubber, the problem I have with Rubber, mm-hmm. is that it is way too long for its own good. Yes, I feel like this would have been really funny as a nice, concise, like 20 minute short film. 20, maybe 40 minutes long. Maybe. If they just kept it to a very tight... If, if they tightened up the pacing a lot. Like, you could cut out about half of this movie mm-hmm. and not really miss a whole lot. And I hate saying that about movies, but this really is one of those movies where this is an, this is a funny idea, but it's not really the kind of funny idea that lends itself well to a 75-minute film. Not without being way more creative than they were way more creative. This movie was absolutely hampered by its budget, which was very limited. Mm-hmm. It was hampered by probably a lot of time constraints. They did not have a whole lot of uh, locations that they could shoot at, so they had to make do with what they had. Mm-hmm. It has way too many long, lingering scenes on the tire, where it's like, you kind of just have to guess at what they're trying to do with the tire and its characterization. Mm-hmm. The tire's characterization. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah. The, the, the yeah. sheer insanity of the phrase that I just said, but there was a there was a good idea here, but it just feels it's it's just drowned out by its whatever execution. There's funny bits, but they're few and far between. This is one of those movies where I saw it, I actually saw this movie back when I first got Netflix streaming, and back when Netflix was like new on the Wii, mm-hmm. so I watched it there, and I. My opinion hasn't changed a whole lot of the movie since. I saw it back then, thought uh, that was certainly a movie about a killer tire, and then moved on. And watching it now, I still have about the same opinion, but like I have more issues with it now from a structural standpoint, from a writing standpoint, characterization. Yeah. I think the only the, the one positive I'll give this film is that the woman that the tire is in love with actually does have a nice rack, and that, that is something we can appreciate. I can we can appreciate that, but yeah, like yeah. otherwise, there are way too many issues for me to put it in the all right category because there were long stretches where me and Zeke were just kind of bored. We made our own fun, and that was we had we had to make our own fun, mm-hmm. and we kind of struggled with that after a point. So yeah, this is like the uh, movie. Yeah, uh, Highlander. <laughs> I'm curious what your opinion on this movie is. Highlander is. I I saw it. I said, I have now seen Highlander. I don't really have a desire to see Highlander again. It's it's whatever. Um I think if if you just want like a I feel like even if you just want an 80s action movie, there are better movies for that. Um That's that's completely fair. Yeah. Um I actually like this movie uh because of its ambition for the time. Uh this is a long-spanning urban fantasy movie with a main character who has lived like a long period of time and has gone through all these different lives. I um, Conceptually, I love that. I just I yeah. don't like how it's executed here for some reason. That's understandable. Yeah, I, I guess I just don't... Um, I don't find the characters all that interesting. I don't find the... The plot is conceptually interesting, but the way it actually happens is kind of whatever. Honestly, I feel like this premise doesn't lend itself to a film very well. It feels more like a TV show premise. Um, Which is funny, because there is a Highlander TV show, and that's pretty well re- well respected for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do really like the movie, though. I think it's got some good action scenes. It has excellent cinematography. I would put it around where American Psycho is. It held my attention better than Goldeneye, that's for sure. Um, I really like this movie, uh, mm-hmm. I would put this above Batman vs. TMNT. Okay. Yeah, I can respect that. I did... I, yeah, I, 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 I also did like it better than Batman vs. TMNT, so yeah. There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it there. We'll put it there. Yeah. That sounds about right. And, and finally... Finally! 
where he saving the best for last, it's Max Keeble's big move. Oh man, this movie is cinema. <laughs> I actually love Max Hebel's big move. It is a perfect period piece. It is a perfect encapsulation of a slice of time. It's it's funny. It it actually has a really well developed plot and arc for its main character. It, it the the main cast are really well written and surprisingly three dimensional in terms of the, the characterization. It's got iconic moments of both comedy and thematic poignancy. You know, it's got it's got the bully being traumatized by the mascot frog. It's got the fucking fight between the PDA kid and the ice cream man. Yeah. <laughs> just even just the premise alone, I've never seen another film have this have this fucking plot. It's great. The yeah yeah it, like every little thing like the dad in the fucking chicken suit or the cheese costume or whatever the fuck he was wearing. It's like fucking yeah. This this is peak mid two thousands kids kids. Uh, the the fucking principal is so funny. Oh my god, the principal had us howling. <laughs> oh, the print, the fucking. Oh my god, I love this movie so much. It is. It has. It has energy. It has. The, it has an, a, the, a a great Tony Hawk ass soundtrack. It, it's great. This... I I honestly think the only fucking flaw with this movie, legitimately, is that Alex D. Linz's performance is just okay. Like the main yeah. that sounds like a damning thing to say the main character's performance was just okay, but like yeah, like Alex Alex D. Linz, there's a reason he stopped after acting after this. And yeah, uh but Hulk like three. The, the rest of the movie just has so much color, character, so much fun and creativity. It's hard to hate this movie if you're yeah. in the right mood for it. I Yeah. I loved it actually. Yeah, I will put it above Terminator. Fuck you. Ah, uh, okay. No, you know what? That's fine. That's yeah. fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, and there we... I kind of want to move Expel to Paradise to Ugg because I remember almost nothing about it. Yeah, yeah. Put it at the top of Ugg. It's lonely there. It's lonely there. It's got... Rubber needs company. Yeah, you, know, you, you, you know what? You know what? Rubber, you get a friend. Yeah. Rubber gets a friend. Hooray. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't blow him up with his mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a I would be that would be a funny alternate ending to that movie if it's just a fucking tire rolls in and then their heads explode. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If if we combined rubber and expelled from paradise, <laughs> that would that would probably go into dope ass time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you how you would do that, but th th those two movies put together would make for a pretty fun time. Okay, so. There is our tier list for the official Bakugaijin Movie Night tier, year one tier list, um, both by tier and by within by intra tier. Uh, we watched a lot of movies, and we had a lot of fun. Here, here's to another year of rousing cinema experience. And uh, if I can, if I can maintain this, I'd like to. I would, I would kind of like to build upon this in future years and just keep adding to the same tier list. I think that would be fun. Um, that would be that would be fun. That would be fun. Seeing this grow just so over we, time. Yeah. I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah. So, uh, take a screen cap of that. And, th yeah, thanks for watching us talk about movies for uh, an hour and a half or so. The length of a movie. This itself was a movie. Bakugachi yeah. movie, that tier list of the movie. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you want to join us for our movie nights, we do them usually Mondays um, on the Bakugaijin Discord server, link below. And for more videos of us chuckle fucks, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you around. Zeke Freak out. Ciao, ciao for now.